Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna show you how to install a KitchenAid dishwasher, specifically model number KDFE104HPS. Let's do it. Okay, before we get started, um, if you are, if you still actually have to take um, your old dishwasher out, uh, take a look at my video that I dem just demonstrating how to remove your old dishwasher. It may, it doesn't matter really the model. I just, I just point out some, a few helpful hints on um, how to get your old unit out just to make it a little easier on you. And uh, the other thing is, um, what we'll do is the first thing I'm going to do is uh, show you how to prepare the dishwasher. But before doing so, I'm gonna uh, make you aware of a few things you're gonna find inside this particular model. So this dishwasher will come with this drain hose. Um, most dishwashers come with the drain hose. This one comes with this particular drain hose. And um, of course, it looks like you get a detergent sample. And then in your owner's manual bag, um, that also includes installation instructions, is a little bag of uh, clamps and mounting brackets and a couple of mounting screws. So these, this, this bag right here is going to be the bag that we're going to need to properly install this dishwasher. So let me pull that out. Um, again, it's got two clamps, the drain, uh, two, uh, two, two uh, mounting brackets, two clamps, and then two mounting screws that are inside this bag. These particular clamps, I'll show you in later steps what they're used for. Uh, the other thing that this uh, dishwasher, that's pretty much it, what, what comes with the dishwasher. In addition to those, um, that hardware, what you'll need, and depending on your plumbing uh, and the, your electrical setup, it may vary. On this dishwasher, or for me, I'm gonna be using, for my water supply line, I'm gonna be using a steel braided 3 8 water hose. Um, this is the most common size in our area. It's, a, it's, it's just a six foot, uh, 3 8 inch uh, compression stainless steel hose. Um, the some areas I've done some installs for in, uh, in, in the past, there's half inch lines, so you want to obviously verify what size your plumbing is so you know. But this is the common size that is used with the fittings um, that are attached to the dishwasher. And what I refer, what as far as the fitting you also need is this 90 degree elbow, it's a brass fitting. This will get uh, secured to the dishwasher, um, then the steel braided hose connects to, to this fitting. Uh, and then uh, um, the other thing you'll be needing, in my case, um, your dishwasher is either going to be hardwired or it's going to be plugged in. In our case here, we have an outlet, so we're going to be plugging it in. So because I'm going to be plugging it in, the dishwasher doesn't come um, set with a power cord. It comes preset so that you can wire it in directly. So if your dishwasher is hardwired, which is very common, um, you would be running the wire line, the, the wire, your electric line, directly into a junction box that then is connected with the wire nuts. But as I said, I'll be plugging mine in. So in addition to that stuff, I need a standard 110 power cord. Um, and with the power cord, of course, uh, to connect that, I need three wire nuts as well. And that pretty much sums it up as far as materials. Um, there is a link actually for a, um, a dishwasher kit that I recommend. It pretty much includes everything from the power cord to the line to the fittings. Take a look at that. It's in the description below and um, that just make it a little easier for you. It's a link that it's, 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 got, it's a nice universal kit. Um, uh, other than that, as far as tools, um, you know, use your preferred standard tools that you know you're, you're most familiar with. If you've done this before, you've done anything like this before, or any kind of like projects. But um, it's pretty simple. Um, the the for the supply line because it is a three eighths line. The the fitting for connecting this is a is a five eighths inch wrench. So that's what I use. Or you could use if you don't have a five eighths inch wrench, just use an, uh, a pair of pliers, uh, adjustable. Sorry, use an adjustable wrench. Um, that's the easiest thing. This way you can adjust it to fit. Um, then you'll also need a drill uh, to secure the to, to mount the dishwasher. So that's really the only time you really need a drill to secure the unit. In addition to that, just have a screwdriver. Um, what I like to use the most is like a multi-use driver uh, that has a Phillips head, flat head, and then a different size for the nut drivers, like a, like a just whether it be quarter inch or three eighths. But 
Um, and then a pair of pliers uh, will also be, uh, you'll need a pair of pliers to squeeze these clamps to secure these. So other than that, um, that's really it. It's literally that simple uh, as far as, and I'll, and I'll point out other tools if I'm missing anything. But let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is show you how to um, uh, prepare the dishwasher. So we'll dive right into that first. I mean, Stuff removed. And in order to prepare the dishwasher, what you have to do is get the unit on its um, on its backside. So this particular dishwasher actually has feet on the front that are adjustable, and it's got two wheels on the back. So I've already removed my kick plate, but you can see there's two adjustable feet down there at the bottom, and then on the rear side of the dishwasher. There's wheels, that's how I'm able to, I was able to roll it pretty easy. Right here, um, so two wheels on each side. The wheels, unfortunately, aren't usually used, you know, they're, they're set at a standard height um, so that this washer can be flat and then no, most of the time, you'll only need to adjust the front legs to get the unit level in place. Um, so I'll go ahead and get started to show you what we're gonna do to prepare it. So as I said, we're gonna lay this thing on its back. Um, this insulation blanket is obviously used as a sound barrier. So you don't remove it. If you do remove it, of course, that's the, drum, that's the tub there. But what you do is you do keep this the, um, installed on it. It's not, it's not packaging material. It's insulation and it's used um, to um, just quieten, quieten, quieten the dishwasher. You're not gonna, you won't hear as much of the water splashing and things of that nature. So it's just a, it's a sound barrier. Um, let's go ahead and get this laid down. And I'll show you um, what we're gonna do to prepare it. So I got all the parts that I told you about. Get my tools over here and get started. So I'll go ahead and get started with this is actually this is a box that was here, but um, it kind of came undone. But um, first off, you can, so depending on, I'll go ahead and get started by uh, showing you how to install the, the water supply line. So as you're looking here, this is what you should see. Um, there's this connection, which looks like the, like kind of like the, um, the for th that's where this fitting that I showed you, this brass fitting goes right here. Make sure if, if you look inside, there's like a little screen. That's, that's to stay there, that, that stays there. It's like a filter just to help, um, so no like, um, Lime scale and things like that don't like you know um, um, water or any kind of it doesn't go nothing it doesn't ruin the dishwasher but or mess up the valve so it's a it's a it's a screen that stays there so don't remove it but this filter I mean this um brass fitting has as you can see a seal so being that that's pretty much what will allow to seal so you can tighten this fitting down and because of that you also you don't need to add any kind of um, putty or anything on this thread. But what is important is not cross-threading it. If you cross-thread it, you're, it's just, it, you'll, you'll destroy these teeth and um, <clears throat> you'll ruin the valve. So the best thing to do with this is just do it by hand and get, a, get it started. You know, as you can see, it's nice and easy. I'm not forcing it. And go as far as you can by hand. And you're gonna want to point this uh, stem where the line is gonna connect in the best direction possible based on your setup. As you can see, my setup, I got the sink right here to the left, so I'm gonna be running the line straight back and um, uh, behind, you know, basically to the back side of the dishwasher under the sink, so I'm gonna have mine set up so that it's pointing to the back. After you get it hand tightened all the way, it's all the way to the very end, nothing's cross thread, it's nice and tight, all you have to do is give it an extra like quarter turn. You, this is something that you really do by feeling for it. Like it's, you know, it's, uh, I'm, do it by hand first and then um, give it the, this little extra twist and you should be able to feel, feel it. So I do from here and that's it. I literally didn't even go a quarter turn. Um, and that's tight because I went by hand as much as I could. So, and you'll feel, you just don't force it. Over tightening this will actually uh, create a problem for you. There's no reason to over tighten it, but tighten it enough that it's, it's tight because it is pressure um, <clears throat> in different, different, the, the drain hose, of course, there's no pressure, it's just a flow of water. The water supply line is pressurized, so you do have to make sure it's nice and tight. Uh, just don't over tighten it. Now, the next thing we will do with that is go ahead and collect 
connect our steel braided stainless hose and that threads right here. Same thing, these lines also come with a built-in gasket so um, you don't need any kind of putty or uh, Teflon tape. You could just just tight, put it put it on there and uh, go you know go by hand. I just I uh, I like to you, you probably notice if you watched my you know some of my other videos I really prefer to do as much as I can by hand uh, I, and then use tools when I absolutely need them. So anything that you can do by hand um, will save you um, you know headaches and issues with just you know things just being too strong. You can you don't always have a good sense of of what you're doing when you're using a tool, but do it by hand. It gets nice and tight, and then and then same thing. You're gonna go with this. Don't over tighten it. You over tighten it, you ruin that seal. So we're gonna go here. It's nice and tight. It, it will pretty much stop you. I'm I'm applying a good amount of pressure here, so just don't over tighten. That's tight. That's done. Now, while we're in this position, one of the things I like to point out, depending on um, your setup and you know your flooring, things of that nature. One of, one of the things that makes it a little easier sliding this back is dropping the feet uh, that are in the front to a lower level so that as you're sliding this unit into place, um, you have plenty of room. So just drop this down and then what you'll do once you get it in place and you get it <clears throat> positioned, you'll then go back to these legs to level the unit. So I'm just dropping it down so that when I'm going in, um, I got you know plenty of wiggle room to get it in place. The next thing we're gonna do is, while we're working on the plumbing side of things, let's go ahead and get the drain hose connected. As you'll, you'll see, you're gonna look for this, the other end of the drain. This right here is the drain that is now connected to the pump under the dishwasher. You're gonna go ahead and grab the drain hose that came with the unit. So this guy right here, and this is when you'll actually need the clamps, these two little clamps that come with it. So I'll pop these out. And we got two clamps right here. They appear to be the same in size. They look might be a little bit diff a little, little different or smaller, but um, I use the the green one for um, the bottom here on these uh, on to connect it. <clears throat> the easiest way to do it is um, just slide it over, and then of course push these two together. And as you look in there, you can see it's, it's, it says clamp. So you know the placement of the clamp. So you go in as far as you could, and it stops at that line. And then from there, just grab your pliers and and um, what we'll do is just slide the clamp over to where it is identified as clamp on this on this extension. So put that on here. All right, so now we got our supply line and we have our drain hose connected. Both are connected. Um, the next step in preparing the dishwasher is getting the, your electric um, uh, ready. So if you're hardwired, at this point, um, there's nothing further you could exactly do in this position. The dishwasher, you got your drain hose connected, you got your supply line connected, you've adjusted your feet. Um, this is the junction box that will actually have um, where you'll be connecting the wires and they come in. So if you're wired, I'm going to pull it off so I can show you. This box basically just mounts to the side of the dishwasher just like this. And then what you have is this cover and this screw that, that are used to, to close it off. But I just want to show you. So if, if your unit is hardwired, I'm going to show you that first. At this point, you could stand the dishwasher up. You've pretty much got it ready um, to, 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 be, to be installed. But if you are gonna be putting, it on, putting in a cord, we'll, we'll, I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But if you're hardwired, you're gonna stand it up and just to demonstrate, show you here what you got going on. You have um, a white wire, the black wire, which are gonna be both uh, what you're gonna be looking at as far as the, the wire coming from, um, for your, from your home. <clears throat> and then you have this green screw right here, that's going to be where you're going to attach your ground wire. So coming out of your wall or your, your, your electrical line, you're going to have a white, black, and then just a copper um, ground wire. So you connect these. Um, it's as simple as that. Of course, you can't do it at this point unless you got an extra long line. So you would do it in, in the next step. Well, as, after you get the unit slid into place, usually what you would do is you would 
um, just fish that line to the front of the dishwasher as it's upright, and then you're unfortunately having to do it, you know, down at the bottom while it's up. Um, that's why if, if, if it's at all an option, I always like, I prefer the option of putting in the uh, power cord. Um, this way, <clears throat> uh, this way you can do it uh, here where you got a lot more room to work. But anyways, same, same process though. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to install a power cord if your unit is plugged in. So I'll go ahead and grab that. As I said, it's a standard 110 power cord. And all we're gonna do is um, use that along with, in this situation, because the ground uh, wire screw is attached to this, you don't need a wire nut for it. But, um, so you'll only need two wire nuts. And um, I'll show you how to get that connected. So you're gonna, depending on the kit you got, this particular one will come with this. Uh, it'll look just like this. And you're gonna fish it through this, um, space there you see that so that'll come in first this way you could do all your wiring in this box same thing your electric line that it may be hardwired you're going to run it through here and either secure it <coughs> with this or uh the um a, a clamp for for the electrical line that will allow you this way you can secure the the wires into this box and that looks like this i'll show you um what that is so you have an idea if you're wiring it it's pretty much one of these you should have this on your hard wire. So if that doesn't go in, this would be attached to your wire and then you run your electric uh, wire in through here and then you use this, uh, this side of the uh, cl uh, clamp here to, um, <clears throat> to secure it to the box. So that's what you would have if you, had, if you were hard wiring it. We don't have that, this is gonna go here. Now what I'm gonna do is, um, just since I have the most room, it's the, the wires here are short, so I'm gonna go ahead and secure the ground wire first um, that is, of course, if you are, you know, doing your electric on yours, one of the first steps <clears throat> that you'll know to do when you're, before doing any of this, if you, um, are, when you're removing, you know, before even removing your old dishwasher is of course, making sure that your electric is turned off, um, you know, from the breaker so that you don't have live, live, you know, just peace of mind working. I mean, I know a ton of people that will install these with a hot wire, but probably better not to, <coughs> um, just to, you can work at ease. Um, but as I'm gonna show you here basically what I'm doing. So I took the green wire, I'm putting it behind here, wrapping it around, and then I'm gonna secure, I'm just gonna tighten down that screw to show you, you know, that's gonna hold that, that ground wire. So that's there, nice and tight, and the ground wire is now grounded. Then, of course, you're just gonna connect your <clears throat> your white with your white, and the black wi black line black wire with your black wire. And uh, the way I like to do this is just get the wires as close as you can to each other. You don't want to twist them. Use the wire nut to do the twisting. So just get them as close as you can to each other. And typically, you want to <clears throat> make sure that these wires are about the same. Um, um, length you don't want they don't want them to be off this is close enough for demonstrating purposes but just make sure that these wires are as close uh in length as possible and then use the wire nut uh to, to twist on so as you can see i'm using i'm holding the wires so because if you don't hold the wires and you start to twist the whole thing's going to twist hold the wires so the wires don't start twisting and just use the wire nut to twist the ends the tips and then once you're done with that just give each wire separately a little pull just make sure that um, the, you know, it's not loose. Any loose connection will create a short in the dishwasher. You don't want that. Um, but just once you start running the dishwasher, there may be any kind of vibration or, or any movement. It'll, it'll create a short. So just make sure that's nice and tight. <clears throat> We're going to repeat the same process with the black wire. As I said, get it nice and close. Um, don't twist them by hand. Use the wire nut, hold the wires so that they don't turn and twist. See, they're not moving. And then the only thing that's twisting now is the actual ends. It's nice and tight. This is really short, so I don't have. It's hard to, hard to see, but you can kind of see what I'm doing. And then again, pull, tug, nice and tight, good. And now, the final step is putting the cover back on this box. So that goes here. You go here, and then it covers up this box. So it gets all your. You just put place your wires inside, and and this just slides back. 
and this box is ready to go. <clears throat> now the final thing from here to, to get this box back to where it goes, it simply hooks, it's got a little spot right here on the frame. And then once it goes here and the screw that comes with it holds it. This is why having a nut driver is nice for this particular, it's a quarter inch nut driver that gets secured right here. So I'll put that box back on and my power cord is now installed. So tighten that down and we're done with uh, preparing the, the dishwasher for installation. Let me get that done. As I said, this is it. And step two in installing this dishwasher is going to be sliding the dishwasher in place and then making your electrical and plumbing connections. What I do want to tap on before starting to do that is if your unit is hardwired, and <clears throat> the reason why I keep bringing that up, it's very common. Most of, you know, especially those that are watching this video that have a hardwired dishwasher, don't, you know, it's, it's a common thing. Um, this, what you're gonna do is once you actually start to slide this in place, you're gonna wanna make sure that your electric line is on is positioned on this right side of the dishwasher because that's where that electrical box is located. So position your electric line, try to you know keep it down on the floor as, as straight as possible so that once you slide the dishwasher back, it's not um, it doesn't just get pushed back behind the dishwasher and you can't reach it. You have very little space to work down there, especially when you start looking when you have your water line down there, you got your drain hose down there, you got the pump, the motor is just there's not a whole lot of room to be trying to reach for um, that the, that electric line. So thank me later on that. Um, just get that in place. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, get this dishwasher pushed into place. Since we have a, a plug-in, for those of you that have yours plug, your dishwasher also uh, 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 being installed with a power cord, what you're going to do is you're going to fish all three lines, um, all three of these lines um, under your sink. Typically, the outlet for your dishwasher is under the sink. Um, I, you can, I mean, I have, I have an outlet here behind my dishwasher, but that's just because of, um, for installation purposes and, and demonstration, but you're going to run, you know, yours is probably under your sink. That is the common place for it to be. So, um, you know, don't worry about that, but, um, I would, I'll show you in my setup, the, the, the drain holes on these dishwashers goes, um, comes from the bottom. So you can either, if your hole at the bottom, um, if you have a hole down towards the bottom of the cabinet, you can run all three lines through that hole. We'll just make sure it's big enough. You can see I got a hole down there. Um, I actually have, with my setup, I have a little space um, between, I have a spacer that's between the dishwasher and um, the cabinet under the sink. So I also have a hole up top that I have plenty of room to be able to just run um, my drain hose through the top because Technically, what you're gonna to wanna to do if you fish the drain hose through the bottom, what's really important in doing is after it's thrown through the bottom, what you're gonna to wanna to, you're gonna to need to do is elevate it so that it's higher than the drain that it's connecting to. So if you fish it through the bottom, not a problem, but be sure, and I'll show you in the next step, be sure that it's not drooping. You don't want water to backflow from your sink or your garbage disposal or whatever it is, backflow back into the dishwasher. It just um, it's inefficient for the dishwasher itself. You just have water, standing water. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and fish my drain hose through the top, run that through here, and, um, and then of course uh, my supply line is going to get ran through the bottom hole right through here, and I'm just going to plug in mine right here, but you'll be fishing yours under uh, the counter as far as the outlet. Now the next thing we could do is start uh, pushing the dishwasher into place. So after you get the dishwasher positioned right in front of the space, what you want to do is just make sure that you pull, you, you know, get under the sink and pull the lines that are um, down here so that you can, just, just so they don't get pinched up behind the unit. So this is my supply line, that's as pulled as much as it could. Here's my drain hose, I'm going to go ahead and pull that through too. So here's my drain hose. I got it over here. As you can see, mine is going to be draining into the garbage disposal. Um, and since I am mentioning the garbage disposal, if you recently had your garbage disposal replaced, uh, be sure that the plug inside the disposal has, has been notched out because they make garbage disposals universal so that if you have a dishwasher, 
um, of course it'll work and if you don't have a dishwasher it will still work so it's usually it comes from the manufacturer every garbage disposal comes from the manufacturer with a stop you know with a plug inside so that you know it, it's, it's closed off but mine's already you know it's ready for use but just if you if you did just double check that um, I, you'd be surprised how many times I you know people replace their dishwasher thinking it broke just coincidentally after their, their disposal was replaced but in fact all it was was that whoever put in the garbage disposal forgot to take that plug out so make sure this is clear just you can um, grab a screwdriver run it through just make sure it shoots it right through so that I know that there's no plug in there so that's good and uh, and of course as you, if you ran your um, power cord through here make sure you're pulling on that as well so everything is pulled up ready to go now from this step we're gonna backtrack and you're gonna slowly push the dishwasher into the space and continue to feed your lines so that they're not getting crunched behind um, as you're pushing the dishwasher into place just make sure that you're mindful of this insulation blanket just push it in um, you get it in a good spot where you can get, get it kind of cleared and um, avoid it but, um, crunching up and getting too close to the hinge what happens is this will start to push as you put it in it if it's a tight you know it's a tight space of course so this you'll this will start to come forward and ends up right here and then it creates a problem for you in opening and closing uh, the dishwasher so just be sure that the insulation is pushed back um, so that you can keep it pushed back as it comes and avoid avoiding making contact with the um, with the hinge uh, the door hinge on the side so as I'm pushing it in you can see I'm going nice and easy just push it back see see how it's wanting to do that but you just you could just free it away push it away so that it's pulled away see and um, and then once you're about halfway um, go back uh, under the sink and uh, pull your lines through just to make sure there's room see that went through same thing with the drain hose so I got them pulled through and then from this point you should be able to push it all the way back but before pushing it back this is when I like to um, go ahead and add my mounting brackets so you're gonna have um, you're gonna have two options uh, in securing uh, the dishwasher you could either do a under the counter mount or a side mount which is accessible through these behind these covers you got that right there um, is how you could do a side mount but um, those are your two options there's one on each side here or here that's how you're going to do a side mount or of course under <coughs> the under the, the under the counter mount now if you're gonna if you have um, regular wood counters um, then you could do the under counter mount or if you have a bracket um, that was maybe installed when you had granite put in then that's another option that allows you to do an under counter mount we don't have either of those options so um, I only have granite I don't have a bracket and I don't I don't recommend drilling or screwing into granite um, you know just at the possible risk of, of cracking it or just you know not doing it properly I don't, I don't I don't recommend it especially considering you're opening and closing the dishwasher you don't want to put that pressure on the granite um, but uh, the what you could do, um, and, and like like us, is as, we're, as I'm going to demonstrate here, is do a side mount. So the way you would do that is I'll show you. First thing we're going to do is go ahead and pop. I'm going to pop these covers off. So you could do it with a flathead screwdriver, um, and it just comes right out. So you either side uh, you get in there with the, like a flathead screwdriver, and that cover will pop right out. So that's that. Um, get those removed. This way you can access the hole behind it so that you can actually run the, the screw from the side into, into the bracket. So for, after you remove that, now you're going to get the mounting brackets that, were, that I showed you um, that, are, that are included with the unit. And the way these are installed is, let me show you on this side, a little bit more room. <coughs> um, actually... They go, so basically all you're gonna do is you grab this bracket here and it has this groove and it's what's gonna create, you know, this will go um, onto here, but, and then just is hard to angle it, but you can see right here on the back side of the mounting bracket, you just twist 
Uh, this with uh, either a pair of pliers, I'll show you in just a second. So you got, so that goes here, and then you just twist this to just make a, um, just so it holds the bracket in place. But um, before you, you actually could do that, as you can see, since we're looking at this bracket, you see how they're, they got pre-cut spots? Um, you're going to want to bend this bracket so that um, you can remove it. Just bend it back and forth, and you could shorten the bracket. Or um, if you don't have, so like if it, I have solid cabinets on both sides. I have like a solid piece of wood. So I can actually run my screw right through this hole, in through this hole, and secure my unit. There are certain uh, situations where you may not have solid wood here. So before rushing and, and, and shortening this bracket, you may not have that option. You're, you may have just a thin piece of cabinet and it doesn't exactly line up with this bracket. And if that's the case, then what you're gonna have to do is use the edge of the cabinet, the face of the cabinet or the edge of the cabinet to secure it on a, on a further you know, hole, like maybe here or here. So you don't wanna you know, remove this hole at this whole part of the bracket off and then you're stuck you won't be able to secure the unit without having to make you know extra modifications so try to you know be you know do this cautiously you're going to want to be mindful of your your cabinet space if this is going to line up excellent you go right through here and through here it's nice and clean seamless and none of this shows but if you don't have that again you end up you know you're going to slide this dishwasher and you know and figure out where it's going to go and then mark that and you'll have to pull the dishwasher back out so you can cut the excess or else this will, this will end up hanging past your um, cabinet. So you don't need this much, but I'm gonna show you. In my case, I can, I'm gonna, I can fully remove all this from here over. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. And as I said, that can be done with, um, it's, it's either if you got a pair of snips or um, or two pairs of pliers, you can bend it back, but let me show you, this is the bracket, and it's already pre-cut, so really you don't even need that. You could just, once you hold it, you just gotta hold it um, here, so it's nice and secure, and then you just bend it back and forth, because it's already pre-cut. Once you bend it back and forth enough, look at that, it comes right out. So, um, I'm gonna do that to the other side, and I'll show you, same, same thing here on this side. We're gonna go ahead and pop that on here. It just goes in. Oops, goes in right here, and you're, you got that, and then you bend this part of the, on the, on the back side of it. Just bend it so that it holds it in place. So I'm gonna go here, and twist it. Boom, and that holds it. So that's good to go. So let me go ahead and prepare this bracket. I'm gonna just snip the, the other end off. Boom, that's off. And then now, um, it's nice and tight, it's ready to go. So now I've created the brackets that I need um, in order to do the side mount. So at this point, now I'm ready to finish pushing the dishwasher in place. So let's go ahead and do that. It's pushed into place. And once I'm here, I finish grabbing the hoses and lines that are going under the sink just to make sure they're still free um, and not pinched in any way. And that is the that step in basically just uh, um, pushing the dishwasher into place. And um, at this point, now that we have it there, what I like to go ahead and do almost immediately is uh, connect the supply line to the water and turn it on. Um, this way, I've got, I have plenty of time to discover any possible leak from my water connection. Um, it gives you, you're still, you still have multiple steps from here that are, include things like leveling the unit, securing the unit, um, putting the kick plate on, those are all in the following steps. But why I recommend putting, hooking up your water hose is so that you can hook up the water, and um or, or so you could turn the water on and just make sure that we don't have any leaks so i'm gonna go ahead and do that let's go ahead and get the, the water connected and that's in this step here uh, more than likely at this point you know exactly where the water was going of course all dishwashers connect to the hot water supply 
um, which is typically in standard plumbing is going to be on the left side of your um, of your faucet. So it's the left side is usually the hot side. And I'm going to go ahead and make that connection. Again, I'm using my 5 8 inch wrench. Here's the steel hose. It's difficult to see in my setup, but I'm going to have you take a, you know, just glance at it right back there in that corner. And that's where I'm going to make my connection to the bottom of that valve. Go here and um, I'm connecting, I'm, I'm, I'm just threading it on by hand as much as I can and then just adding the couple extra turns to really get it secured um, with the wrench. Once I have that nice and tight, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the water. All right, water is turned on. Um, so what I, instantly, water's on. Obviously, you can, as you're there, you could feel to make sure that the connection, that there's no um, uh, any kind of uh, leak. And go ahead and just go ahead and take a look at the connection you made uh, with the brass fitting under the dishwasher and the hose. I'll try to see if I can give you a little visual. That's right in this area. So as you can see, it's um, right here. You're looking here. You're looking at that connection, nice and dry. Um, there's, um, all right, so we, we checked that. We made the water connection. Now the next thing we can do um, is go ahead, before we make any further connections, just to make sure we don't have any additional problems, um, what I, I want to go ahead and do is level the unit and, and get it secured. So this is the, really the final step in um, installing the dishwasher is getting it leveled um, with the ground. So what's really important is the dishwasher, you're, you know, you, uh, unfortunately, you, you, you can't pay 100%. It can't just be based on cabinets or counters. You know, if you got an older counter, it may be drooping in the middle. Um, so you can't go off of that because it will create a problem for you in how the door um, properly seals and, and, and closes. So it's got to be a nice soft close. You see what's going on here? It's a nice soft close. It clamps. <clears throat> if, you, if you don't, if the unit's not level, um, right now, obviously, I haven't raised it. But if the unit's not level, you'll hear it hit one side of the frame or the other if you you know if you go up too high on one side over the other and it's not level with the ground then it it it, it, it basically warp it like wedges it, it turns the dishwasher it makes it um the the tub itself sit lopsided and if it's sitting lopsided it's rubbing against the side and you'll hear it hit it'll like make a hit sound uh like a bait like you could hear it hit the side this is this is how it should be um sealing all right so from here, my next move is going to be going ahead and um, raising the feet. So I'm dropping the legs down so that I can get a nice clean um, adjustment and I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so as uh, I got my unit nice and level, um, so I got the level on it. Um, one of the, 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 some of the spots that I check, see right there, the bubbles right there in the center. I like to um, <clears throat> basically look at, I have a few different checkpoints when I'm installing the dish, dishwasher. Tend to be a bit of a perfectionist um, during this step. Um, I just try to make sure that I have the same spacing pretty much um, from the top of the dishwasher to the bottom of the counter at the top. And then I also have the same gap on um, both sides of the unit. This way I don't have any issues with the unit, you know, just sitting and not sitting properly. Um, I got that ready. But one thing I do want to bring to your attention, when you're adjusting the feet in the front, um, you could do it with, you know, either by hand. Sometimes you can turn it by hand or uh, a pair of uh, pliers. But what is really easy, the top of that foot is the perfect, it's the size of a, um, a 3 16 inch socket. And this really is a, a lifesaver. Um, there's, if you, especially if you don't, if your flooring is not the same size, if you have tile in the front of it where you can't access those feet, like say a lot of homes, tile will only be up to here and there's no tile like it's not flat like this it's very difficult to get to this foot by hand with tools or anything but this guy right here saves you because you simply just go to the top of the of the foot and sorry about that it looks like i had a little glitch there but if at all possible if you have access to a 3 16 um, inch socket and a socket wrench it definitely makes it easier uh, to adjust the front legs on these particular dishwashers um, now the next step from here is we're going to go ahead before actually um, actually you know mounting the unit and installing the kick plate. I like to do a test cycle. So go ahead and locate locate the other clamp neat um, for the drain hose and go ahead and, and get that onto the drain hose. Just get it past this part of the 
uh, extension and um, go ahead and connect it. You, if you look at this drain hose, it does have different levels where on the inside portion of the dishwasher back, or I'm sorry, the hose down back here is for a smaller um, pipe in case yours is not being uh, draining into the garbage disposal. The PVC piping tends to be thinner, so it's not as big. So you would uh, either cut that down or if the stem on the PVC is long enough, you just got to make sure that you, you, you slide this hose over there and the clamp that you'll actually need to secure it to would be here. But this clamp won't work in that situation. Um, the clamp you'll actually need is the uh, a different style clamp uh, that looks like this. Uh, so if you were to have a small, you know, you got to make sure you could tighten it. So you would use this clamp here instead. You would just slide that over and then you could tighten it back here to however, you know, whatever, uh, however tightness you need to go. <clears throat> but in this case, we're going to the garbage disposal. I'm going to go ahead and slide this over. And as you could see, one of the things I mentioned earlier that was really important is making sure that your drain hose does not droop. So in my situation, I ran the drain hose from the top, so it's already elevated. And you can see it's elevated higher than the drain hose. Water, um, water won't backflow into the dishwasher this way. If you ran your drain hose through the bottom, um, which is also a common procedure, <clears throat> you could run it through the bottom if you don't have the space and you're forced to do it so that you don't pinch the line. You would run the drain hose uh, through a bottom, uh, bottom part of the cabinet. What's important is after you do so is you shoot that drain hose straight up to the side of the rear of the cabinet, the back side there. Just go up with it and elevate it either <clears throat> with a zip tie, a clamp, whatever you want to find. Um, most of the time I use a zip tie and I just find something to secure it to. Um, but you just want to make sure that you can get this drain, keep this drain hose elevated and so that it doesn't actually just sag down. If it sags down, it, water will backflow into the, the dishwasher creating um, standing water. So let me go ahead and get this tight in, uh, placed and pl put in place. Boom, it's nice and tight, the drain hose is on. Um, so um, now that the drain hose is on, we could go ahead and do our test cycle before um, securing the unit. Why I recommend doing your test cycle is uh, before securing and putting the plate on is so that you could you could just make sure that we don't have you don't have any leaks both under the dishwasher or under the sink, just in case. Um, of course, you need to pull the unit out. You don't want to go through that all that extra trouble. So let's go ahead. You would just um, choose a cycle, just something simple, whatever, normal wash. And then with this particular model, we don't have to work. Don't worry about options. You're just testing for it working. Hit the start button. Um, all you really need to do is get the water, the dishwasher to fill with water. After it fills with water, it'll start to wash. You'll hear it. Uh, be patient with it as it, you know, as it kicks on. Um, give it a second. Um, and once it starts to wash, just cancel the cycle. And when you cancel the cycle, what will happen is any water that's filled into the dishwasher will actually drain from the unit and the unit will power off. So run the dishwasher, cancel the cycle. And during that step, after you cancel the cycle, you want to check under the dishwasher for any leaks. Look around the pump, look around the drain hose connection, just verify everything is nice and dry. And then look under your sink where you made that, that last step with the, the drain hose connection. Just make sure it's nice and dry. Um, and after you do that, then you can go ahead and move on to both uh, securing. Um, uh, you can go ahead and e either way, it doesn't make a difference, but you can put the kick plate on. Um, so you're going to look for this right here, this is going to be your kick plate, and it has two little plastic um, uh, screw-like uh, uh, parts that go in through, uh, it's pretty much this has, and this is insulation by the way, so that stays, it's not packaging, but that just also is part of um, keeping the dishwasher, you know, keeping it quiet so you don't hear. But this simply goes on here, pushed back, and then it lines up with the frame of the dishwasher where the little plastic uh, screw covers go in and then twist. It's like a quarter turn. So it goes in, you push the screws in, um, and that gets the kick plate installed. Um, that's pretty straightforward, There's nothing really uh, to show there. And then of course, the final step uh, is securing the unit. And that is going to be, as I mentioned, we've got a side mount. You're gonna locate your two screws that were also included in the hardware. And the two screws, um, you could, are, are, are Phillips head, you grab your drill at this point and you would just drive this screw through here. 
uh, into the into into that bracket that we installed the, the mounting bracket and into the side of the cabinet on both sides. Um, once that's done, then you just have these little um, plastic covers that will just cover that hole, and that simply just goes on just like that on both sides. Um, <clears throat> and there you have it. And that's how to install a kitchen KitchenAid dishwasher. I really hope this video helps. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like and of course, subscribe for more. Thanks.